Dr. Greg Ellis here. We now need to start discussing different degenerative diseases, but let's start with diabetes, since there's about 18 million diabetics in the U.S. alone. Projections are talking about 30 to 40 million in the next 10 to 15 years. That's just tremendous. Now we know that diabetes is associated with obesity and the way most practitioners deal with this is they try and deal with the blood sugar or the glucose and insulin therapy is a primary treatment for those who are what we call insulin dependent diabetics. The argument is that the pancreas is not secreting enough insulin to drive the sugar into the cell. So that's the basic idea, that we're eating carbohydrates, we're digesting them into blood glucose, this glucose has to be taken up by the cells, and of course it's argued primarily by most that that is then used as the primary source of fuel. Of course, fat is the primary source of fuel of the body, not glucose. Now it'll burn glucose if that's what you're feeding it, it has no choice. It doesn't want to, it wants to burn fat. But the body will respond to the current nutritional environment. So it's both the nutrients and the hormonal adaptations that occur that decide what the body's going to do and what it's going to choose to do. The argument, of course, is that the brain and the nervous system can only burn glucose. They can't burn anything else. This is not true. The brain, after, say, 12 days of starvation, will derive 75% of its fuel from ketone bodies, which are derived from fat, from free fatty acids, leaving the fat cell, going into the liver, and being converted into ketone bodies. And, of course, glucose use is minimized under these conditions. So now what we have is this unbelievable epidemic that's been blamed for decades on glucose. And, of course, they implicate the high fat and high cholesterol diet as being involved in this process too. Never once have these researchers looked at the effects of diet composition, how much of what you eat is made up of carbohydrates and fat and protein and looked at different things in terms of the relationship between these feeding patterns. Of course, a lot of this work has already been done. In the previous video series, I've described the fact that saturated fat is not involved in the cause of heart disease. We know that and it has a lot to do with what's called the carbohydrate background. That's an interesting term. What's the amount of carbohydrates that you habitually consume and how does that affect and determine what happens to the fat you eat? And of course the carbohydrates that you eat are converted to human fat, which is a highly saturated fat. No matter that they tell us to lose weight, which of course will cause you to dump a ton of saturated fat into your blood. What's the explanation for this? Why will the saturated fat coming from your own fat stores not cause heart disease? That belies imagination. So we're seeing, you're seeing, of course, that our medical practitioners do not have a strong background in nutritional biochemistry, and the whole thing is built on the house of cards, and it is now crumbling. It's crashing down all around them, and they don't realize it yet. As I've said, there's a nutritional revolution going on right now, today, as we speak, and it's going to change the whole landscape. How long will that take? I can't tell you, but by the way the wheels of science move, and the, by the way the disseminate dissemination of information moves, it's going to take a while. Generally, we understand that, that existing groups must die out because they will never change their belief system. 
And I think that is an absolute truth. We can't get rid of this stuff until these groups just die and go away and these new grips. Now, you, on the other hand, can grab on to this revolutionary information and use it to your health advantage. One of my blog readers posted on my Facebook page today about his cholesterol. And I said, why are you even bothering to talk about cholesterol? Why? We know it has nothing to do with anything. His cholesterol was high, but his HDL, which is the so good, good cholesterol, if we want to even buy into that idea, and I don't, was 90. So that means his total cholesterol HDL ratio was 3.7, which by all the standards that are accepted as to the idea of what's good in the whole lipid theory of heart disease is that that was a good number. Excellent. Now, excellent number means most of his cholesterol is made up of HDL, not the LDL, not the different sized particles of LDL, the dense heavy ones or the small fluffy ones, which are now also implicated in the development of heart disease. And he's just panic straight. And of course the doctors want to do what all the doctors want to do. They want to put him on statins. He even made the funny comment about having Dr. Oz stick his hands in his chest to pull out the fat. You got to let this go. You got to stop. <coughs> you got to stop being fearful of cholesterol and fat. It's really glucose that's causing all the problem. Blood, sugar. So, now, our most recent research, dating back to maybe about 2000, a little after, is that glucose is the pre predominant factor involved in the development of diabetes. And that diabetes is not, in fact, a disease of sugar problems, glucose problems, it's a disease caused by lipid or fat abnormalities. So the, the cells of the body, particularly the muscle cells, actually accumulate fat in the muscle. And this fat in the muscle translates to a problem at the cellular level which blocks the transport of glucose into the muscle. Now this is called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance. We all know that uh, diabetes and obesity are related and most of these people have insulin resistance. Meaning you throw more insulin in there, which is supposed to drive the glucose into the cell, and it doesn't matter. Now we also know that in the in the diabetic phase, insulin does not work to increase the uptake of glucose into the cells. And before there is complete failure of the pancreas, the pancreas actually secretes a lot of insulin, sort of hypersecretion. And this is in response to the accumulating fat load in the muscle cells. This is an absolutely amazing breakthrough. So it's the fat load in the cell that speaks to the cell membranes. We don't make this technically difficult, but the cell membranes take up varying amounts of fuel and food products. And it says this is what we're going to let in and what we're not going to let in. Well, they won't let in more glucose. They don't want more glucose. Because the glucose is leading to the development of the accumulation of fat in the cell. So this is the early development of diabetes. And from this, we then go forward and find out that it is carbohydrates that are causing the problem. I've stated this over and over. I won't stop. This message has to get out there. It is the carbohydrates that are the cause of all these degenerative diseases, including diabetes and aging and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. They just mess 
everything up. That's how it works. And we've lived for the last 50 to 60 years in a paradigm that has blamed fat and blamed cholesterol when in fact it always has been carbohydrates. And all the recommendations for healthy eating include the consumption of more grains, fruits, and vegetables. It comes from everybody. The USDA, the government, the nutrition societies, everybody. I can't imagine a more clueless group, although you may, in your area of expertise, say with the economy and banking or something else, understand conceptually where all these people are going wrong. This is my subject. This is my topic. I understand where these people are going and why they're going wrong. They don't do their homework. You would think with backgrounds in physiology and anatomy and biochemistry, they would have done enough to find out some of the basics, but that's not the case. It doesn't happen. And then they just read papers from different expert committees and organizations, and then they buy into that. Why well, think for yourself? That's really not a good idea. You gotta, you gotta suck into the group speak. That's important. Suck into the group speak. Be part of your group. Be part of the people that are saying the same thing you are, that want you to say the same thing, and then you are there. And no one will bother you about that because you're championing the party line. And that's how this whole game goes. So we're going to begin to explore in more detail the diabetes epidemic and where it's going and where it's leading so many people, so many children, and the massive amount of health consequences that it's going to cause and the fact that an understanding of diabetes is not based on the idea that it's a problem with carbohydrate metabolism but a problem based on lipid or fat metabolism. That's where the problem is. It is a disease of fat metabolism. And until you get a handle on that and begin to make the adjustments in your diet that you need to make to solve that problem, you don't have a chance to get through this gig. And insulin lowering drugs and other diabetic control mechanisms and other diabetes control mechanisms are in your future. And this implies all kinds of problems. It's just mind-boggling what it implies. All you have to do is go on the internet and take a look at diabetes and look at the complications that occur as a result of being a diabetic. And it's just a nightmare. An absolute nightmare, which increases quickly as a result of our aging process. So I'm trying to avoid it, doing the best that I can. Because, you know, I don't eat hardly any carbohydrates at all. I snack on some of the old foods of my youth, but for the most part, I don't touch carbohydrates of any kind. You know, they talk about differences in the glycemic index. Forget that. It's all difference. <coughs> when you eat carbs, they digest and they become glucose or blood sugar. It's all the same stuff. It doesn't matter how fast that glucose gets into your blood has nothing to do with anything, or what kind of response it asks for from the pancreas in terms of insulin response, forget about it. Does not matter. Okay, that's the beginning of, of a few videos I'm going to begin doing on diabetes, so you can begin to understand how this horrific disease is part of the degenerative processes that occur with aging and from diet composition. Okay, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. I'll be back with you soon.